So as I've said within the previous videos, this is just a little thing to help explain how the game of Magic the Gathering works. Quick, easy, and well, I actually wouldn't say quick, there's quite a bit to it, but easy. So, let's zoom out so that, oh, no, that's in, my bad. Forgive me for the shaky, I don't have anything for my phone, I don't have much of any fancy recording equipment. So I do apologize for the quality of this video. Anyways, uh, yeah, just in case if anyone else is watching this, probably not, who freaking cares. So today we're talking about synergy and consistency, and we're going to start off with synergy. Now, synergy is just a term used within the game, among the community. What uh, synergy basically means is the, um, the ability for cards to complement themselves and to basically be used to do one thing. Now, cards who, that do multiple different things work together, in a sense. So, this is an example of synergy. Now, let's say that uh, our, we have one objective, and we're going to say that is just get a crap ton of health. So, well, synergy can work out very well. So, you know, you will be able to get through landfall. So every time you play a land, you can choose to do one of those. And, well, since we want to get a bu bunch of life, we just gain two life. And then any time a creature plays or we play a creature, then we will gain one life. So, but that's how we're going to get our life is through these two right here. However, how are we going to activate all these? Well, we can play one land at a time, and then we can play a creature whenever. However, we can only really rely on the gain of two health because we won't always be able to play a creature every turn. So how do we uh, how do we boost these up? How do we get stuff that does multiple things to get us more? Well, we want to get a whole bunch of creatures, and so let's think. Well, remember Zendikar's Royal? Anytime we uh, play a land or something like that, then uh, we get a little card. Well. It's uh, got something else in, uh, similar to it, and we'll use this one as an example. So, this will actually be a payoff as well for whenever we have a whole bunch of lands. It will further pay off for this right here. So, basically, every time we get a land, we'll create an insect, but if we have a certain number of lands, if we have six or more, then it will begin to create copies of itself, which will actually cause... Cause it to go from 1 to 2 to 4 to 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. And so then you're looking at 256 life off of her just for playing a bunch of lands, but you're going to have to be able to play a whole bunch of lands. So really that just kind of makes this thing not entirely worth it, but it makes it to where it's an additional payoff. So how are we going to get the lands? Because we want to get the lands to create a bunch of creatures, to get a bunch of health, and then we also want to get the payoff for playing the lands, in addition to getting these guys. How are we going to do that? Well, in terms of landfall, we got these. We got these guys right here. So, he would allow us to play two lands at once. So, let's say we already have six. We play one, we play two. And then we put, well, we put him down before we put down our lands. Alright. So then we do our 1, and then our 2, and it goes from 1 to 2 on the first line we play, and then it goes from 2 to 4. Well, what do you freaking do? It's going to take forever to get the massive army this way. So, you know, it's just a little bonus. It's just that little extra payoff, because we'll have spells known as a ramp. So, basically, you'd search your library, put one down on the, on the battlefield, and then you get one in your hand, which will actually allow you to go on for longer you know you're not gonna like run out of lands in a turn to play you're not gonna go one short because this will like, have an extra one in your hand and then we have the spring bloom druid whenever he enters the battlefield you're gonna sacrifice a land and then you search a library and then you gain two lands so basically by your next turn you'll be ahead by one but you're losing a land well don't worry because you still get the two and then you'll get the two landfalls on that so you go from one to two so if you play your two lands first, you go from one, you'll have the one starting out, and then you'll gain two, and then four, and then you play him, you go from four to eight to sixteen. And then you play that, and then you go from sixteen to thirty-two. And then this guy, you sacrifice him, you get a land. Wow, so you kill him, 
can go from 32 to 64. Well, that doesn't seem very efficient because I just play him and I just get one out of it. Well, what's the point of doing that? Well, how can I use it to where I can constantly get this? And how can I use him to where I can keep getting the two lands at once? How can I get them, how, how, how can I get them both together? Well, at this point in time, you know, you just, you can you just sack this guy. He's down. Well, how am I going to get him back? Well, you do have this guy right here. And at that point in time, like I said, you got a 32 or so, so you just sacrifice one, and then it goes back on your library, you get him back. Oh wait, no, never mind, he goes straight back to the battlefield, and you just sack him again, and you just keep on that, you just keep that going. Because you're gaining double the amount that's already there, in exchange for only one of them. So this is going to keep on building a massive army, assuming you have the mana for it. But given the fact that everything's coming in tapped, probably not immediately. And then him. Well, what good is all that mana for the resurrections if I don't have it? If he keeps taking it away, what would be the point of getting rid of him and then bringing him back? Well, here's the cool thing. What if you could get your lands from out of your graveyard? No longer sacrifice. Well, that's where this guy comes in. And this thing comes in. This is where you get all your stuff back. So, you know, you can get any target permanence. So, you can even use this, the sorcery, to get this back. And then you, or you can just use it to gain 16 life, but at this point in time, we're looking at gaining an additional 32, so. And then some, just off of that. So, you know, you just return target permanent card from a graveyard your hand, so then you just get this one back, and then that, because you can choose, let's see, yeah, you can choose four, you can do one multiple times. But the thing is, how on earth would we... So we have a way to get back our lands, but how would we get this back, this guy back, to get the additional two? Come on, I don't want to be stuck at this. Well, you know, we have village rights, which will allow you to sacrifice the creature. Because unless if a creature has sacrifice right there in its description, to say sacrifice this, then you can sacrifice it. But since he doesn't have an option here to sacrifice him, it doesn't say you can, then you can't. You can't sacrifice it. Which is sadness. So, we'll kill him manually, and we'll get an additional two cards out of it, so we can get more lands for the future turns. Yeah? So, we just pay one black mana, and then he would die, and he's, well, we'll say that he's already dead, so they've both done their purpose. And so, all three of them go in there, that can't be used. And then we'll just say that we've sacked that before to gain additional landfall, and then we sacked that one, because that was the one that we used to get the additional two off of that. Wow, four cards right there already? Well then, he would do all four of those. This is just an example synergy. And then what happened is you get those two back and you get these guys back. Well, then you get the two, so you go from 32 to 64 to 128, and then you would sack this again, go back to your graveyard, and then you gain another land. And then you go from 128 to 256, and wham, wham, already you have like 256 plus the, let's say the three lands or whatever you did, how, however many lands that was, you gain, you know, all your life for that, and bam, I mean, you only start off with 40, but at that point in time, you're basically a tank, and you can take almost anything, at least as far as I know, well, not, I've, I've seen things, though, that would disprove that. But, yeah, that's an example of synergy. So this next part is a lot easier. It's all about consistency. So all these things are just meant to make it consistent. So you want to gain life off of this? Well, as of right now, this is the only one I have to gain life. Now keep in mind, playing commander, you're going to have 100 cards. So you're going to have about a 1% chance to get the cards you want. So you want to make sure that you have a bunch of different cards that do, that does the same thing. See, so this here just ensures that I'll get a land to play on the next turn. Well, that one included. These give me my health for playing my lands due to landfalls. Just, I mean, these are the ones that can give me, the, give me my health if I want the help. See, there, oh well, they generate a bunch of creatures I can use. Some of which generate creatures whenever I play a land. Synergy, yeah. 
just very easy. That's all you need. Just a bunch of cards to do a bunch of different things. See, like uh, killing things, because you want to kill your spring balloon druid and get your stuff, and then you want to, uh, yeah, you want to resurrect him. You want to bring him back. You want to get rid of. You want to get back all those lands that he kept on uh, destroying. And then that guy as well. Yeah. Hey, look at that. I mean, just, you know, and then bring back more lands from your graveyard. That's, that's all this synergy and consistency. Just cards work together. And, uh, you know, you have a lot of them.